Can you hear me? You're on mute still. MJ, you here? All right, we're back. All right. Woo! All right, let's go. Let's roll. We're Okay, no background noise. Now we got yeah. it. All right, let's rock and roll. Sorry, fellas. Technical difficulties. We got to just roll with it. Take the firehouse. Yeah, buddy. What, what you have to do it. differently? Adam, I'm not saying nothing. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's, let's, do you guys, you guys watch that video of, of Dion? A wide yeah. retire? Yeah. Dude, that All right. Was so it's so, cool. rolling. Yeah. I mean, so so what do you got? What's your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, I don't know how you make 17 bucks an hour single parent with three kids think you can retire early. And he, and he did it like that's I, I when your why is strong enough, the how figures itself out like, you know, real estate's obviously a big part of that at, at the end. But at the very beginning, how the hell do you think you can retire early with that scenario? And that's the stuff that I love uh, to talk about because people tell it say it's not possible. But, you know, people on this call, like we've done our own thing and it is possible. So that's, that's the stuff that, you know, just hits me hard. Yeah, Dion is amazing, man. Is as I always say, Dionism, and you know, I just the way he puts things. You know, even even like just the math of time. I don't know if any of you watched the video. I, I sent it to you guys, and it's kind of just talking about how you you can pretty much create more time for yourself. And you know, I actually kind of started some trouble on on X. You know, I you know someone posted that you know you have to take advantage of things, and you can't create more time. And I said. Oh, you know, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of can create time, right? And he, you know, kind of was like, "No, you can't." And I'm, I kind of basically explained it to him, like how how Dion put it, right? That, you know, you, you know, you get yourself into position where you know you don't have to travel to work, you don't have to get ready for work, and you don't have to do all these things. And now you've just created more more time for yourself, right? You know, more opportunities to to do what you want to do. So, what's your thoughts on that, MJ? Yeah, um, like you guys was contesting to, Dion is an excellent communicator. He breaks things down to his lamest terms and to, like, even back then when he started, uh, you know, $17 an hour, three kids, single parent in the Washington state. That's an expensive state to, you know, live and survive and et cetera, even back then. So to even be confident or even try to come up with a blueprint is, is, is amazing and impressive in, in itself alone. Um, I really enjoyed it, and he, I mean, you got to listen to somebody who got evidence and proof behind it, working what they, what they have said and what they've done. So it, it lines up, and you wanna, I wanna get in and get out. I don't wanna work thirty, forty, possibly fifty years by the time I'm up there. So, um, I do believe in retiring early, especially if I set myself up now and make the sacrifices for now, and um. They always say, do do what's hard now so you can enjoy what's easy later. If you do what's easy now, you will have a hard life later. So, Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest thing, and I, I don't really talk about this story a lot, but, you know, it's like for me, when I first got into the firehouse, um, my, my basically the, my first shift in the department, once we finished recruit class, my dad had a stroke. And, he, and he's still with us, but he's basically paralyzed on the right side. And for me, that really opened my eyes to realizing like, so even, you know, I had a son later in life and my son is going to be nine soon, but my dad has never really had the opportunity to to play with my son, you know, at a, at a full ability, right? Like running around and being able to throw ball with him and do all these type of things. And it made me realize like, you know, Maybe if I was financially better or or whatnot, then maybe I would have had a kid at a younger age, right? Or, you know, and my dad would have been younger and would have had these opportunities to to play with my son and have more fun. And I mean, not that he has, doesn't have fun. He does the best he can, but it's just, it makes you realize like, you know, time is, time is of the essence and you, you never know when something can happen and change things for you. 
Exactly. Yeah, and, and good. No, no, that was I was just gonna say exactly. exactly. Yeah, and, and to kind of dig deeper on that, Mark, right? It's like you have something like that happen in your life that hits hard, and then it's like, okay, well, what were you doing before that? Like, was it that type of thing that was necessary to kind of rattle the cages that put you in that sense of urgency to be able to to, to know I, I need to go do these things to be able to set myself up for the future. And, and that's the hard part where you talk about, you know, the, being in the comfort zone. Hey, I, I know that I could be doing more. I know I could do this, 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 and this. Oh, but I'll just, you know, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Like that's the stuff that I, the mental dialogue that I had to go through personally. It's like, okay, I know I need to be doing this. It's nine o'clock at night. <sighs> I guess I'll do it tomorrow. And like you do that enough. That's where, that's where dreams die. Yeah, I think I think though it's that it's finding that balance because you touched on it comfort zone. And I think I was definitely comfortable. Like I was in this, you know, but part of that is like, you know, so part of like you said, my dad had the stroke, but part of it was comfort, like, hey, let's enjoy life, right? So let's do these things because you never know what's gonna happen. But at the same time, it wasn't towards like a financial independence mindset where it's like, I'm gonna work till I'm whatever 60 with my pension but yet i'm gonna enjoy myself this entire time instead of where kind of dion breaks it down to hey you can actually create more time if you do the work you know maybe five ten years and you're able to retire early or be financially independent now you've just created more time to do stuff that you want to enjoy whether it's playing with your kids or traveling but now you've created all this opportunity. So I think that really shifted. So not only going from comfort, but also focusing on, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, people, money, money can make you happy, right? You know, people are always saying money doesn't, shouldn't make you happy and all these type of things, but, you know, money, and it makes your life better, basically, you know. Yeah, I mean, you use the word, use the word balance and balance is different for, you know, various people. And also, you you know, some people use the word seasons. I'm in a season to grow. I'm in a season to work on my health. I'm in a season to work on my family. Like you, things come and go, you have and flow. It's not, it doesn't have to always be an absolute. You can always, you know, adjust things over time. Um, and, and one of the things that, you know, when we talk about the, the, I, the verbalization of why it's important to retire early and like having a goal, having a destination, have a, a purpose or having a mission is so important you know, from a psychological standpoint, kind of going back into that, that why, when your why is strong enough, because it, it's hard. This journey is hard. Like what Dion was talking about uh, yesterday, you know, going in and doing all the extra hours and the double, the, the, the two jobs and the, maybe even the third job and all this extra work you put in, it takes something that transcends, you know, like a mission or your family or your, or your why to be able to put in the extra work and having that vision, that goal, you know, and having that carry with you over and over and over every day, bring it into your life daily is something that I personally ha- have a process for. And I think it's so important. Yeah. You know, we had, we had some technical difficulties, so I'm, I'm sorry, you, you know, you, Joe and MJ, you guys didn't kind of get to introduce yourself to each other. And maybe I sent Joe um, our video MJ. So hopefully he was able to maybe watch it a little bit and kind of get a backstory on you. Um, but yeah, you know, so like Joe, I'm not sure, you know, so MJ kind of talked about, you know, during our chat, like, you know, gambling kind of was a little bit of his kind of beginning. Right. And, and, and that's why I asked you too, Joe, if you had a gamble, cause I used to gamble quite a bit and even sports, you know, type of stuff. So, you know, also that was more what kind of put me down this path and realizing like there's, there's better ways to do it. Right. You know, you don't see too much people gambling that have probably created financial freedom for themselves, right? It's it's constant circle, right? So so you want to touch yeah. on that a little bit, maybe MJ? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um gaveling is uh is a terrible vice to have. Um it's just like just if you want to gamble, just set money on fire. Like literally, you know, <laughs> sometimes you win, but whatever you win, the casino, the sports a book takes two, three, four X that away from you. Um, it's a it's a dangerous cycle. When you get involved with that, everything evolves around money and and like even going back to the Dion point, the confidence that he had to be uh, financially free when he was forty in the situation he had with gambling, it creates a confidence. It's it's a wrong type of confidence, which I didn't even know exist. 
you know, like you say, the casino will build you up. They'll let you win five hundred, a thousand dollars to take three to four thousand from you. So they create this this temporary confidence because in in gambling, as we all know, you can never win consistently. And that's where they get you. You say, Oh, I just won two thousand, just won four thousand. And your confidence steady building and building to it just breaks you down. It's just like you, you you get to the top of the, the mountain and somebody just push you down like literally. So and and it's a cutthroat industry. As soon as you lose, your money gone. If you win, you might have to wait two or three days, depending on how much it was, and for them to process your money. So it's it's a it's a tough cycle. And I just figured it was a better way to spend my money to put use to my capital. So yeah, gambling. Good luck to all the ones that do it. I mean, I might do it here. Very small minimum best to it. So yeah. obviously I progress downwards. So yeah. yeah. Well when when Mark and I were talking about this conversation, you know, my, my take on it from a similar standpoint was the more day trading standpoint of you know that that quick dopamine hit of a, of, of the win. And when you lose and you panic sell and it's gone just as fast. And, um, I have a question for you though. Um, from, from a standpoint of the gambling, it seems like it, it the last couple of years, I mean, they've just been pushing it from a marketing standpoint and all the websites and all, all the advertising and DraftKings and whatever. I mean, it's just everywhere. And like, I, I've never been a sports gambling. I never really got into it. Um, going right, to the right. casinos, I, I've done that part and then Texas hold them. Um, but right. what, what got you in to doing it in the first place? Oh, that's a great question. Um, gambling in general. Well, I'm glad I did start three or four years before this wave of all this promotion of, you know, like you say, these gambling platforms or whatever. So I kind of had my, my, um, my fix and got out, but simply answer your question. Uh, I used to work at the the baseball stadium here in Chicago, the Chicago White Sox. I was the grounds crew. We used to put the tarp on the field all that time. I, he was from Arizona. That used to gamble hard. He kind of turned me on. So he was just, oh, man, I just made $1,500 in three hours. I mean, people ain't even making $1,500 in two weeks. You mean I can make $1,500 in three hours? What's, what's, what's to it? You know, and so he kind of introduced it to me. And luckily, the worst thing that could have happened to me, I won my first bet. <laughs> so, like I said, they created that false confidence, that false narrative that this is easy. I can do this. And I just kind of ran with it from there. Yeah, that usually happens, right? You win your first one, and then you know you might lose a few, and it's like, but you've won, right? So you're like, you're constantly, I can, I can win it back. And like you said, it's this constant kind of, you just get back to even, and you come back down. But like, like Joe, like you touched on it. I mean, it's it's very normalized already, right? Like. I think I don't know if you, you probably saw that that somebody tweeted like they were on the subway I think in, in New York or somewhere and there was everyone sitting around this person had their phone open on DraftKings and when they I guess they were heading to the game and they're all on DraftKings and it's just kind of this normal thing like you see it everywhere and you know it, it's just one of those things where like I said it's kind of this trap that that keeps people in the rat race and I'm glad I, I've headed down this path and definitely um you know have visions of retiring early and creating more more time for myself and i think and you know if i want to gamble then then i'll probably be in a better position to to have fun doing it where i'm not trying to win or i need to win right you can you put yourself in a position to where it's more just entertainment for you right and if you lose you lose but i think that's the thing where yeah you got you got to get to this certain point but uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, I mean, how much time are you guys trying to create by hopefully retiring early and whatnot? So like, what is your vision, MJ? Like, do you have a certain timeline that you want to retire soon or how, what are you looking at? Um, I think for me, I'm 31. To be honest, I think 40 Two forty three ish is not a bad, or even forty five. I even say forty five. Still beats the regular sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven. What they got standing within society. I think forty five. I'm still, you know, not too old. I still enjoy a lot of life and things of that nature. Because I don't know who said it, but this kind of stuck with me. We give our best life, our young years, 30s, 40s to come to 
institutions and they expect us to retire on the third or fourth quarter of, of our life. I mean, just really looking at that, that, that that's not even fair. It makes sense. I mean, I get it. We're in a capitalistic society. People are all in it for profit and, you know, they got systems in place already. But if you can break the system or even challenge the systems to, you know, want to retire early, to want to enjoy life, I, I think it shouldn't be something that's like cliche. You know, you, you got some conversations like this with this take you you know you you just insane for having these conversations i think it should be a, a, a more of these conversations but um to simply answer your question mark i would say 45 years of age me being 31 nice that's still young man that's that's because me and joe are past that are you i don't know joe you're not past that yet are you i'm 40 oh you're only i thought you were 45 man sorry man it's all that white hair you gotta <laughs> shave it Every day, <laughs> or gray hair. Sorry, I don't. Know. But yeah, I mean, for for me, it's definitely just like you said. It's that even like you know the big home and all those type of things, right? It's more. I want to. I want to just travel instead. Like I want to be mobile, and I, I don't need you know even like the home now that I have is is too big, and you know I like I said, me and my son's mom split up. So even now, I'm like. I'm like in one room. I could live in one room probably in this this house, and but now I'm like having to clean up the you know because the cats are running around, so there's cat hair everywhere. So I got to clean up this whole house and do the yard and you know maintain these things, and it's just like what a waste of time, man. You know, so even that is kind of like you know how Dion talked about creating time, you know, so get to a point where you know hire a yard person right to to take care of the yard, so you save this time where you would be spending doing the yard and actually you know i would do that now it's just I, I actually make it kind of a job for my son so that's kind of why i don't save that time but it's something that my son does and it, I, you know trying to help him like you got to do some work to whatever but as far as saving time there's so many ways to create time if you're able to get into a financial position right like having you know you could get a personal chef maybe right and, and do the cooking for you you know or house cleaning right but those are all ways to save time so that you can do other things. And so. Yeah. I mean, talking about that time, like what, like, you know, when you're in, in the fight, so to speak, you know, and, and you're, you're working towards that imaginary vision or destination you want to get to of retiring or whatever it may be, you know, that time that you do say you're going to spend dollars to do, have someone do your yard work. Right. Well then, what are you going to do with that time? What's the most dollar productive type of activities you can be doing with the time and being very clear about it. And maybe you track it, maybe you monitor or whatever it is. And um, that's something that's so important. If you're going to be spending the money and you're justifying it, right. How is the money coming back in? Like in, in my world, being in sales, you know, you do certain activities, you may not see the results, you know, for months or a year. Right. So it's, it's going to be very challenging to really kind of grasp, is something being effective or not effective with the activities or time that you, that you use, whether it be marketing or prospecting, all those different things. Um, but once you get there, then yeah, then you know, like you mentioned, traveling or spending more time with the family or doing whatever else you want to do, maybe as a new business or whatever. I, I did want to kind of go back on the the gambling part of it. You know, like these these apps that you have in your hand that you can, you know, make the bets. Um, Robinhood. Um, the trading app has kind of come under scrutiny the last few years at the same time because they've, you know, got come under, under scrutiny of the 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 type of gamifying trading and making it super easy and, you know, um, the different buttons and the different I don't know I don't know what the exact details I've never been on Robinhood a bit but, you know, gamifying it on options as well uh, which is a leverage play and people I think a, only a small percentage of people actually make money over over a full year of trading you know most people lose money. And, and trading and it, it just makes it so easy to get in and the education, you know, the, the support isn't always there, so to speak. Absolutely. I, I want to kind of uh, piggyback off that. Um, I really dislike the, um, the apps, the gaming apps that's available and everything is so immediate. Everything is now like you can even put your PayPal money, your credit money on there, spend money you really don't have on a, a sporting event. And, you know, just lose it all. And there's more people that's losing their house, their cars, their family, their 
everything that's not being talked about. And I mean, obviously, like I say, the society we in is so capitalistic. You know, these people got the top psychiatrists, um, statisticians, mathematicians on their team, and then you know, they go into these bigger platforms and and these bigger people that got big influences on cultures and communities. And, you know, since we might like this person, we, we kind of just influence and it's just all one big, one big game that, 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 well, not we, because I'm not really participating in it, but people are just like, just losing money, hand over fist, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if these platforms make a million dollars a day at day. It's, 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 it's just, it's crazy profitable. Nobody talking about the gambling addiction and the people that's going under, you know, water and essentially. So it, it sucks. And I, and I really do dislike it in my personal opinion. So. Yeah. It's just that quick money, right? I mean, you, you and it for some reason, everyone wins their first time seems like, right. You, you make your first <laughs> bet or first day and you win and it's, it hooks you. Or if you so happen lose, you, you, you get a, you get, you get credit so you can, you can place uh, again. So now you might win a second or third time. So, you know, yeah. You know, I, I think the big thing though, that I, that hopefully people take away from this is just thinking differently about, like creating time, right? You know, they said, you know, on X, some, someone made that tweet and they really, you know, most people don't think, you know, you can create time because, you know, you really can't actually create time, extra time, right? But you can give yourself ways to make better use of your time or enjoy your time more. And I think that's the one thing. If we just really, like I said, Dion, the way he, wraps his head around things and makes these Dionisms, like even like Joel, like he was talking about saving, right? The strive for 25, save 25%, but he talked about saving 100%, right? So you get to that point to where, you know, yeah, saving 25% is great, but you want to get to a financial point where pretty much you could technically save 100%, right? And it's just his the way he wraps his head around things. Instead and, of your W-2. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Yep. yeah. But it's it's just you got to get to that point, right? Where you you are bringing in, or you're you know you're bringing in passive income, or you're generating income, and then now you can just save hundred percent, right? And I think that's super important. But just the, even the thought of just creating time. I mean, the way you you know most people just say, "I'll create time when I'm retired," right? That's when I'll have more time. But if you just so let me ask you, Mark. So as far as you creating time, as far as travel, what places have you been? What places would you like to visit? You know, that that's a great question. And that's probably something that I regret so far. And, you know, I can't change things, but I was never really big on traveling. I mean, I haven't really been, um, you know, I, I pretty much just go to like, you know, when my son's mom is from North Carolina. So we go in that area, North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, Tennessee, you know, of course, you know, California, Vegas, um, you know, I've been to Canada, I have relatives in Canada, but I, I didn't really travel a lot when I was younger and I, 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 I was really just comfortable where I was at and I never really saw the need or importance of it. But now I look at it, I'm like, there's so much growing and learning from just traveling and I, I wish I did a lot more of it. But that's also you got to be in the financial position to do that. Right. But that's also what I want to give to my son. Right. Like, you know, a lot of people in Hawaii, they spend about maybe some of the private schools you're spending about thirty thousand dollars a year to send your you send your child to a private school, and I get it. You know, you have some of the like one of the schools here is one of the number one schools in the country. You know, private schools. Um, you know, that's where Obama went, and and you know whatever. But anyways, but it's like there's people that are spending that kind of money to send their kids to private school, and I'm like, you know, I, I'd rather probably travel with my son and have him learn that way, right? But. But I definitely feel that's that's one thing I do regret. You know, I think I got super comfortable with life and I, I never saw the importance of traveling. And that's something that I want to do and hopefully give my son a lot more of more experiences that way. What about you? You're going to be in Hawaii. You're talking about coming to Hawaii, you said, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about it. It's on the list. It's on the list. It's either um, between, I, I want to go to Belgium. So, okay, let me answer the question to where I've been. I've been to... Puerto Rico, but that's U.S. territory. I've been to mainly like Caribbean places, uh, Costa Rica, Colombia, um, Belize. Um, I've been to Canada, and uh, I'm going to Panama in May of ne next month. So I kind of want to go north and other places in general. So I I've been to quite a few countries. So yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, 
I say that's something I really regret and I wish I no, so saw what place the benefit. would you like to go? You know, like what places are that's on your radar? Like, you know, if it was ah, up well, to you, you I had think the money, this year, the time, freedom, you know. Yeah. Well, this year I think the plan is to take him to Japan. I think for, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of more also what he wants to do, what what he's showing okay. enjoyment in. And so I want to take him to Japan. And that's kind of the plan for this year. And then we'll see maybe what his interest is next year, or what he's kind of looking at. Right, right. But so this year is probably going to be Japan. Yeah, I was wishing the All Brad event would have been in Vegas, the next one. That would have been nice. I mean, in Hawaii, I meant to say. I I brought that up to Zuber. I said, well, about Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it's it's probably a lot of work for a lot of people to get here. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is. And, you know, Joe couldn't even make it to Vegas to join us. But and it's like, you know, right down mm -hmm. the road for him. But. Um, so question for you, Joe. Um, so you mentioned you in sales. So as far as saying you, um, sometimes you don't get immediate results. It might take a couple of months or even a year. So is that kind of, can you kind of relate that to real estate at all in your case? Like as far as, oh, yeah. you know, you know, you put in the initial work, you might not see the work to just after, you know? Yeah. I mean, on Mark's channel, we talked a lot about that, that kind of arbitrary five year time frame. Like I know for me personally, I bought my first house in 2009, not knowing what I was doing, you know, didn't have a mentor, bought my second one in 2013, turned the old one into a rental, uh, bought another one in 2017 uh, as a primary, turned the old one into a rental. And that was, that's kind of where I get the stair-step method, buying primary residences and kind of uh, stair-stepping your way up. Um, and it wasn't until probably 2019 that I really, at least from my mental perspective, started saying to myself, oh, this is working. Oh, shit. Like, <laughs> advisor going up. I did a refi on one of my properties and the advisor went up and renters paying your, your balances down. And uh, I bought a couple of four families in 2017 as well. Um, and it's like, you know, that quick fix of day trading. Like I was doing my job and doing a little bit of day trading on the side and some successes, mostly failures on that. And right. just, but I'm in the industry, like I'll just, I'm going to invest in real estate and it's just boring. It's boring and slow which it's not exciting, but on the flip side, we kind of bring it back to the day trading or the gambling part of it. You can't, it's hard to panic sell too. Yeah. And right. keeping you right. in the game, you know, letting time do its thing is also, you know, for me, it was important. Um, um, could you speak about a little bit of your story and the market you in? And you just mentioned a couple of properties, all that single family, small, multi, if you don't mind talking just to kind of get a little, um, you know, yeah. background of you. Yeah. So I live in St. Louis. The The very first property that I purchased was in the middle of, of St. Louis in the, in the county, a city called Brentwood. Brentwood. And, you know, being in sales, like you don't know, you know, where your paychecks going to come from, you know, a few months down yeah. the line. So like, I was very intentional in buying in a spot that I knew that I, if something happened to me or my job, or whatever, it would be easy to rent. And so that's, right. if somebody wants to invest in real estate, that's something that's important to me that I talk about is that you're going to be very intentional that, Hey, something happens that it's easy to rent out in a good area. Um, so my first two purchases were single families, I'm sorry, a condo and then a single family property. Um, and then I bought my third property, which is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in 2017, I bought two, four families in St. Louis. And I bought those off market. And one of the conversations with um, one of the sellers, there were, there were two different sellers. And I'm walking the property with the actual seller. And he says, you know, hey, Joel, like, if I were to give one piece of advice, it's either own 10 or own none. Because he only had one. And he went into it thinking he would get more. And he never got more. And it's just too much work to, to deal with. Um, no economies of scale with expenses and whatever. And so that's something that I vividly remember. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're going to do one, you're better off having none, you know? Um, and then I also, my partner and I, so we run a mortgage branch. We purchased a commercial building in St. Louis, renovated it, operated. And that was at the end of 2017. Um, and then he and I got a couple other multifamilies along the way. And then 21, I bought a, um, a short-term rental in, in Destin, Florida. And then uh, I've got a few other things in Florida that I'm working on as well. So that's just kind of a quick outline. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that.
Yeah, Joe's a good Joe's guy. Good. He's 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 all over the oh. place though. <laughs> but I'm a Cardinals. <laughs> Yeah, he's a Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah, Cardinals. you know he's a legend in St. Louis, MJ. He's like the what is it? Old man's league strikeout, Men, men's league, league baseball yeah. strikeout record holder. Yeah, oh. yeah, something like that. So you big at, at one point in time? Yeah, yeah. You I played high, ball? high, high level D three baseball. High yeah. level. D3. That's why what we position. St- I played, I played shortstop, man. And me and Joe said if he comes to Vegas, we're gonna go to the batting cage and he's gonna pitch to me. And then we're gonna see what's up. <laughs> said he can't mean me though. He can't aim for me. but <laughs> but 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 Joe is the biggest Warriors fan. He's a home, he's a homer, he's a Golden State Warriors basketball fan. Yeah. Yeah. Looking back at it, I played basketball growing up or whatnot, only to the high school level. But I wish I would have gotten into baseball. But for whatever reason, I feel like even though it's competitive, too, you got a lot of foreigners, you know, Hispanics, Asians, just all over, right, in baseball. I feel like it's, it's you got a better chance of almost making it pro because it's so many, like, rounds, right? Essentially, you feel like compared to, like, a basketball or football, do you think, Joel, like, you got a, a bigger, ch- a better chance of going pro or a higher level in baseball versus football or basketball? I mean, that, that's it's such a, an interesting question because you look at just the actual raw numbers, right? Like in basketball, you have 30 teams maybe, but only five starters, 12 people on a team. Baseball, you got a 25, 26-man roster. Um, so more, you know, all out data chances in baseball than basketball. Football, you got a 53-man roster. So technically wow. you've got a better chance. And I feel like when you're in college – and you get drafted in the top two rounds, like the athleticism, the tape, it, it tells a story. In baseball, that's a crapshoot. Like you can have all the tools, all the athletic ability, but like for some reason it doesn't doesn't click when you get to the high levels. And have like Albert Pools was like a 52nd round draft pick, and he's like one of the greatest players of all time. Like, wow. Yeah. Like I you know, it's kind of like gambling, though, right? Like, I think baseball is a slower sport in a sense, right? So it doesn't attract as many people maybe to play. I think a lot of kids are attracted to, like, football, you know, basketball, you know, even MMA. It's more exciting, right? And baseball kind of just falls in the background. Oh, it's, like, it's like it's like buying a whole real estate then in that case, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, I mean – that's the way I kind of look at it now is it's, it's a little bit of a more slower sport, you know, but it's, it's a sport that I would love to take my son more to because it actually gives you a chance to really talk right. You know, in between innings and, you know, in between pitches, but like the other games are so fast paced that it's hard to, you know, you're there enjoying yeah. it, but you're not there and you can't really have a conversation uh, with someone else too much. But so- you a Pirates fan, Mark, or Cubs, or White Sox, or how do, no, how do that go? I am actually, and I will always call them the Indians. I'm actually a Cleveland, Cleveland. Indians fan. Yeah. Oh. Um, I went, well, so when I was younger, I was really a big Boston Red Sox fan. Boston and then Red when Sox. I really started getting into baseball, though, and collecting baseball cards, and, and the, the movie Major League came out. And that's kind of why I started liking the Indians. And that's so ever since then, I just, I've, I've liked the Indians and, but I do like players on the Pirates. So I, so I still play. So for me, like you know, we kind of touched on earlier, like gambling and all that. So I, I, I did dabble in gambling quite a bit before. So I do still play like fantasy sports and that's kind of like my way of gambling, but not gambling. Right. So I'm still somewhat following sports, following stats a little bit, but I'm not actually like, I mean, yeah, there's it's like a watered-down version. Watered yeah, down version, yeah. So it, it fills that void or that need, I guess. But I'm not actually really gambling on a heavy basis. But, but, um, but yeah, yeah. We, we, when you talk about sports and then kind of relate it back into investing in real estate and like going back into the the time part of the equation, you know, Dion talking about how you know you can get time back, right? Well. In his story, it was like, I'm going to work 12 years of all this extra job and this and this and that. And then you retire early. It's like 12 hours or 12, 12 years. Like the majority of people can't think 12 minutes or 12 days, let alone 12 years down the road. 
and put all this extra work in for something that's going to happen in 12 years. That, that's one of the hardest parts that I think, especially with the people and the clients that I talk to, um, just how do you equate to today, this immediate gratification type of society and, and you know, beings that we are to be thinking 10, 12, 30 years down the road. Cause that like Buffett, like he was always thinking 30 years down the road with those investing strategies, even at age 92 or 99, he's thinking 30 years down the road. And that, I think that's one of the biggest challenges. You know, one of the challenges I do see, like, you know, so the firehouse before a lot of guys could get in and, and still retire, early, you know, with a, with a great pension, you know, they could get out at, you know, if they got in at 20, they could be done by 45 and have this pension set up for them, free medical. But the, the problem I also see is they never really developed the skill to, you know, their pension is not growing at the same rate as inflation. So there's a lot of guys, you know, we see them retired captains, you know, we see them in the neighborhood and and they're like, you know, I mean, yeah, they're, they're doing fine. Like they're getting a steady income, but it's like, they're, you know, they're, they're scrimping on this and that because their, their pension hasn't grown at the same rate. Right. So it's like, that's another thing too, is, you know, you can retire early, but if you haven't put yourself in a position to either continue to increase that income or that stream or these skills to, to grow your portfolio, then you could basically be, you know, in retirement and, and, and struggling or, or, you know, cutting coupons in a sense. Right. And I think yeah. that's the one thing that opened my mind too. So even, you know, some people talk about like, you know, if everything goes wrong, what would you do? Right. And it's like, yeah, we, you know, I have a game plan now, right. I have these skills in place and on how to get a property or how to build capital or how to connect with someone that I can partner with or, or what. So I built these relationships and skills to where if, if even if I did retire or things went wrong, you know, now you have these tools in place to, to continue to grow. Right. So I think that's super important also. Yeah. As you're talking about that, Mark, um, you know, part of my journey in, in the mortgage industry, you know, early on in my career, uh, talking about trying to put time, extra time in, I didn't really have a side hustle. I just worked 60, 70 hours a week, especially early on trying to be able to make extra money, um, and, and build a business. And that, that, that helped me get ahead and save more money. Um, but along my journey, I worked with a lot of military clientele and that, 20 years in, you can retire and get your military pension. And the idea of buying a house, living there for a few years, using a VA loan, no money down, leave on your next, you know, um, PCS, run the other one out, buy the next one, potentially stacking properties. I've seen a lot of people be able to do that. And then when you have spouses that are both military and both have that VA benefit, you can stagger the entitlements. And, you know, I've got a client who, you know, they both retired, they did, did their thing, they've got multiple properties. And now she's in, her name is Teresa Torres, and she's a good friend of mine. And now she kind of got into the sub two for sale by owner contract for deed type of world. And she had a mentor and not, now she's doing deals, assignment fees and selling properties and all, her own web, like all these things. And she's got the income coming in from the military. And now she's built a business on the, on the side and she's, she's doing things. So it's like if if you can get a pension and retire at forty five or whatever it is, and then have the income coming in and give you more ammunition to be able to fuel the fire, fuel the business, and then have more, get your time back. Yeah, we we all can't wait for that big pay raise, that UPS pay raise, right? You know that that yeah, uh, August of twenty twenty five. So I get the big joint. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that is that is big, man. Yeah, I mean, we. I mean, I, I, what was crazy is, I mean, I, I see, I read, I read a lot of comments and stuff on social media about certain things, and when that was like trending, you know, people just like, especially the the smaller package car people that do the door to door stops deliveries, delivering the brown. It's like, how do just delivering package get paid so more? And it kind of even relates to real estate. So you look, depending on what, what area you're in or something, you say, how did this sell for this? As far as if it's a big amount, it's all about what the people feel like you should be paid, it, like you know, the company administration and, you know, just years and years of like hard labor. And, you know, some of those people have knee replacements and hip. That's why, you know, just over time with the union, it was, they was able to, you know, get things more and more in favor of, uh, of the, uh, the, the average employee, you know, a lot of employees don't even know because I was used to non non-union work for so long until this job. So I just got so much educated, like how much, 
we really not not how much um we're not really um getting paid what we deserve but that's a whole nother story so they think we did we deserve that amount of money bring it on i'll take it <laughs> yeah so you have so, a pension or you, you, you yeah i do yeah we got a, a company paid pensions i got to be here at least minimum five years to be vested but oh. um i think right now yeah and that that is that is um and different from a uh, a lot of trucking companies, no other trucking company or parcel company, they call it parcel package. Um, they don't have pension still. Uh, maybe another carrier or two, but it's mainly like um, first first care responders, teachers, things of that nature normally you know, still maintain their pensions. But yeah, we, we got the company pay pension. Um, I think if I do 20, I don't even know the numbers because I'm not even trying to get that personally. So, <laughs> But I think it's something like 25 years, you get like by the time I think it's four or five thousand dollars or something a month, but I was talking to an older driver that's on the verge of retiring. He was kind of educating. He said the average teamster um, receives nineteen pension checks, so that's like a year and a half. So you retire, and under two years, your your chances of survival is just so low. So you know that kind of woke me up too as well. Yeah. Well. I got to bounce in about five minutes. I got to get my son up for school, but um, any other thoughts and, you know, you guys want to wrap up with or. You kind of talked to multiple topics. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, I kind of got the back end story on Joel and stuff like that. So. Cool. Yeah. He's a troublemaker speaking on X. Speaking so watch out. Of, so he's caused yeah, fights on out. X. <laughs> I was like, speaking of Joel, uh, Embiid returned last night and just oh. stood out. They won the game. Sixers are back in, in the mix here. Anyway. Yeah. What yeah. do you guys think about Wemby? You, you think he's going to be, I mean, he, I he, he had nine blocks. Last night he had nine I blocks. Know. I don't know how you're going to Nine blocks. That guy. Like he puts on about 20 pounds, maybe 15, 20 pounds. Hey, All I'm going to say is, Bon Bon Joy. We 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 mercy beaucoup. <laughs> nah, he's great, man. He, if he can stay healthy and uh, yeah. like to take gains some pounds, but his IQ is good, his 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 skills is good, and he can challenge about any player, even Giannis to LeBron. I mean, it, if he can stay healthy and gain some pounds, it's, it 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 would be his lead. It'd be his lead. Yeah, he he's he's pretty amazing. The numbers he's putting up now, but um. Yeah. So w w one last thing, back to betting, right? Like, there's proof. <laughs> of betting, fixing games going on along the way, you know, I don't know what's going on or not going on, but there, there are examples of where it's, it's happened. Right? right. Um, I was looking at the standings of the, of the West you got in the, the bottom four seats, six, no, se seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, which is the play in you've got right. KD, you've got LeBron and you got Steph, some of the three top names in the game, all in right. the play in. And then you got Sacramento in there and you've got, the Pelicans in there, uh, right above. So if there were ever going to be a, f you, you know, if the Pelicans and the Kings finish nine and 10, but there's probably some fixes going on there because they want to guarantee their names in the, in the, in the playoffs. Just saying. Yes. There's some money. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 It's your it show. Was things taking that came down, about in college so what was that? I said, if your show gets taken down, I'm sorry. Yeah, do it on your channel, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't care. Yeah, what were you saying, MJ? You said something. I you got cut off. Oh, I was gonna say it's been it's been a situation. I think um I forgot the team the the guy played for. I think it was the Toronto Raptors, though. A no name guy, I guess. Um, it was the under because you could do a lot of prop bets or so like on individual players and things of that nature. It was something to oh, where he had the yeah, under yeah. like seven points or something. He so hard, he so called got injured and left. And then I guess he gave the sauce to somebody and they gave to somebody and they gave to somebody, they gave to somebody. And then they looked into it like, you know, this guy, you know, he an under average player. Why they bend this type of big money on them? So they're doing a the whole investigation. And so. I'm pretty sure more of that has happened that people didn't get caught. Then you got the old tiny situation or whatever. I mean, they're not going to start gambling. They're going to make examples out of these players, but so much money being made across the board is, you know, so not surprised. Oh, uh, Hyder said the only Kings are the LA Kings. 
If it ain't hockey, it's just a game. <laughs> go Bulls, go Sox, go Cubs, go Bears. Bears, that's right. Yeah. Number go one Bears. pick. No, that's a you know, that's a good final. Yeah, the Shohei Otani thing. That yeah, that's yeah, they can't let that guy get busted. So it's like <laughs> someone's taking the fall for him, man. Yeah, for sure. There's no way, there's no way he didn't know what's going on. But that's what that was the joke, or that's the meme, right? Yeah, like Pete Rose, Pete Rose is one translator away from making the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, thanks for doing this, you guys. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. Next time will be a lot smoother, but yeah, MJ, thanks for doing it. Joe, did I tell you how me and MJ connected? Mm-mm. Hey, track me down, man. I was leaving the O-Rat event. We we're outside. And he's like, yeah, man, you're you're the firefighter guy. I was like, oh, yeah. But yeah, he tracked me down. And so we yeah. connected that way. And now he Yeah, like, I always watch your videos, though. And I, and I kind of like the little small the group podcast because I think it's more intimate, essentially. I don't, you know, I, I, I know you go rise up and be 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 viral every time you, you you launch eventually so i'm trying to get on board before you blow up so. yeah but it's like sierra sierra doesn't even show up anymore she, homes and hustle she's like too big she doesn't come around anymore she's gonna <laughs> nah sierra's awesome she couldn't make it she's actually in, um in oklahoma right now house hunting so hopefully she she's, i'm sure she's gonna come out with a lot of good content and videos on that but she's looking at homes over there and um, they're thinking of relocating to back to Oklahoma. So I'm sure she's doing stuff with that. Speaking of Mark blowing up. So Mark needs to be putting together his own uh, course or boot camp for firefighters to build their side thing, <laughs> side hustle, invest in real estate. And then people like you, me and you, MJ, need to be able to get him in front of uh, firefighter off, uh, groups. Yeah, him, that's not a bad idea, actually. The firefighters got a lot of time, essentially, within their work week. So, I mean. Right? What do you mean? We're working. We're all working nonstop. Sleeping man. and <laughs> sleeping in. Bed and on Drive Kings, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we get paid. See, the thing, the, so, the thing in the firehouse is we always tell people we get paid to wake up. That's the thing. Mm. Right? All, people are always oh, you're always sleeping and all that. And it's like, yes, but we get paid to wake up. And that that's kind of the the what we see in the firehouses yeah but yeah so this was fun man um Heider, i don't know if Heider's making a short joke or uh, what yeah. but Heider said that's amazing he saw you in the crowds i think he's referring to my height that you actually saw me in the crowd <laughs> that's what i'm assuming Heider's is sneaky that way <laughs> so that's what i'm trying to think but, uh, but mj do, do you have one last question you- for you mark I was gonna ask Mark, um, as as far as Hawaii firefighters, are they the kind of the one of the are y'all um is it a good well paint job there? But as far as the I mean obviously the cost of living is extremely high, but is it like kinda you know, it, it's a good job there in Hawaii essentially, a firefighter? Um how do I put it? It's a it's still a great job. It's a still it's still a job that a lot of people wanna do. The pension is definitely not the same. Um, we do get paid a lot more than a lot of um, when, you know, 20, 30 years ago. But that's also now right, because right. we do more resp- more responsibilities, right? So a lot of, you know, back in the day, it was kind of just strictly fire. Right now you have right. EMS combined with fire, some water uh, safety, water rescue type stuff, um, even like hazmat. So as the department has grown, the pay has also increased, but it's also more responsibility. Um, so that's another thing too, you know, we've sometimes we've branched out too far and we've had water issues like with the jet ski. So that program has been shut down right. because of some unfortunate incidents. Um, right. But, but yeah, so it's still a great job. The, the pension is still good, not as good, but the funny thing is, I think people are making a lot of money other places. So like when I first got in, it was like, you'd, you'd have lines waiting to apply, like sign up. Um, right. Now it's like, 
guys get called for interviews and things and they don't even show up it's, it's very weird before it was like yo you get called and like, you're like yeah and you're like guys don't even show up anymore nowadays so it's a little bit different so it, they're they are having a harder time i think hiring people um but it's but it's still a good job yeah okay what you was gonna say joel i'm sorry i was gonna ask you uh do you have a a, a side gig side hustle side job business not at the moment. I'm only working Tuesday through Friday. I normally try to play basketball a couple of days, stay in physical condition. Um, I take French courses one day out the week or whatever to try to stay mentally um, activated, uh, um, stuff like that. But not, not, not really. I'm, um, I, I kind of live below my means. I got, I mean, I got low expenses. I'm still able to save a good amount of money. Not yet. I'm trying to find something that's convenient, but as far as like hours, only thing really that would work with my hours is like a fast food or, you know, a, a Uber, DoorDash, or something of that sort. I mean, YouTube so, channel. You uh, YouTube channel. As, as of now, I got to learn the game, and I would like to continue to be a guest on up and coming stars like Mark. Mark. You know, for now, to just learn the game and ride his tail, ride his wave, <laughs> and then maybe later on, but. That simply answer your question. No, I don't. No, I don't. That's what I did with Joel. I just rode Joel's coattails for a while. <laughs> and now I'm riding yours. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just all jumping on Sierra's cape. Damn. Homes and hustles. Yeah. Homes and hustles. She didn't let me. She didn't let me jump on. I'm still waiting for the for the invite. So wow. does she do um what she would be doing live streams, et cetera, at this sort of what was her um, I guess um go with her setup with the homes and hustles um she's she's doing a lot of yeah so she does lives with us normally um and me and her do like a weekly thing um so my my vision was kind of like zoobers you know kind of get regular you know weekly regular people that's why you know joel and sierra you know if you if you were interested you know like lauren is lauren she couldn't jump on today but trying to get some people on a regular basis. And then Sierra, you know, she, she's doing still, um, you know, content, but she's also has that kind of merch. She's kind of got pulled back in a little bit to the merchandise stuff. I don't know if I'm supposed to say, but she's, she's doing some stuff for Zuber, making some apparel and stuff. So that's awesome that Zuber reached out to her. So she's coming out with some, um, some like hoodies and sweatpants and stuff. So she's doing that. And, um, you know, she did some, like the hive mapper, you know, trying to do a lot of side hustle type of stuff and, and show people like, oh, these are things that are working. These are not working. Um, but yeah. So yeah, her, yeah, she's, she's going to blow past all of us soon. I think. Unless you, Joel, you got a side hustle. Who? You. You got the side hustle. It's like 10. Uh, I mean, podcast, YouTube, mortgage real estate so you're a loan Try- officer loan originator what are you exactly Lo- loan originator yeah yeah okay yeah so regular stuff commercial stuff fix and flip tscr some of that stuff so from and- your mark from um I, i'm sorry um i was gonna ask so so for example i got a duplex fha on the occupied i got qualified for the five percent conventional but everybody telling me six months of preserves so that's pretty much standard across the industry as you're saying for the new duplex i will only occupy five percent down six months reserve yeah for sure on fha you gotta have six six months reserves conventional uh i'll double off the double check but it's at least three at least three and maybe six oh, three. Double check. okay all right, so Hugo Alonzo from Stay Winning stopped by, and he is going to go live in five minutes. If other people are not doing things and want to check out some awesome content, go check out Stay Winning Podcast. Hugo Alonzo um, is doing some awesome stuff out there on X. And, yeah, go check him out and, and give him some support and hit that like button and go subscribe if you haven't yet. But but Hugo's doing awesome stuff out there. But yeah, man. So yeah, MJ, we'll, we'll, we'll chat after this. Um, you know, if you okay. want to tr- maybe try to get on a regular basis and, and do some stuff and, and, you know, we can maybe bump Joe to number five now. So Joe's been, you know, Sierra's number one and Lauren and Joe's slowly getting phased out a little bit, but. you got to have good bench players. <laughs> you got to have good. Bench. Six men of the year. 
Yeah. Lou, Lou but, Williams. I guess I'll just be Lou Williams. I'm, I'm okay with that. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah thanks for doing this sorry for all the thanks for sticking around anyone that's still here after all the technical difficulties and and uh yeah that was that was my fault i don't know how my my i don't know how the app opened up on my phone my phone is sitting here and somehow it opened up and that's why i didn't I have too many devices open i have ipads open and yeah but um yeah when when you blow up, I'm, I'm gonna be a good I'm gonna be a good spokesman for you. I'm like, I remember the times when Mark could even get to YouTube and zoom up and now look at them, you know. So <laughs> it, it, it's for laughs. That one went live or that one went up on a video. So um, janitor on fire said he was watching the replay of us trying to figure it out. Yeah, great. <laughs> I better go delete that one. Like, Someone's gonna make a meme of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like the hit me up the book. <laughs> Snick, snick, did, move. <laughs> did you see that one, MJ? With, with um, what happened? When, when somebody, what did somebody do? It said, it, do you know what HMU stands for? HMU. Hit me up. <laughs> Joe was reading it off. He's like, come up. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about snack, like some type of, what is it, alt coin or drink or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. It was snack and then HMU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right so yeah thanks for doing this guys we'll do it again and everyone See out y'all. there thanks for coming by all right man take care all right man bye yeah